I'm excited to be back with you again this week. What a great week of reading that we had. The Sermon on the Mount is something that always sticks with me, which is why I chose that this week, specifically the Beatitudes. Have you ever needed an attitude adjustment? I have. As a child, that was when I got in trouble for, that's what I got in trouble for the most. I was the human form of a Sour Patch Kid. I could be sweet, then sour, and vice versa in a matter of seconds. And when I was in the sour attitude, that is when I would get in trouble. There are times that I still need to, I still need to adjust my attitude today. Pastor Mike Beef used to say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. And there are so many times that I need to check my attitude before I do something that would be damaging to myself or to a friendship. When we look at the Beatitudes, we see a list of things that we need to do, but they aren't called the do attitudes. They're called the be attitudes. As we talk today and as you discuss in your small groups, I want you to keep that in mind. This wasn't a list that Jesus gave for us to do. This was a way that he was saying we should live. Now, before we dive too deep into the Beatitudes, I want to go over a few historical items. One, this was Jesus' second speech to a large crowd of people. His first was when he taught by the sea that we read on September 30th. He was speaking to a crowd of people that had been waiting for the Messiah. So I am sure that they were wondering while he was speaking if he was the Messiah. Second, we're going to get a lesson in Greek. The Greek word for blessed is makarios. Makarios in English is an adjective meaning happy. A happy attitude is always the best attitude. Each time Jesus starts with happy are those. Jesus left the people with a way to live and be happy. So let's take a look at them. The first one is God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Some, transla some translations read poor in spirit. So Jesus isn't talking about people who are financially poor. He's referring to people who see that because they are humans, they are unworthy to stand in God's presence and they must rely on him for his mercy and grace. Think of pride, specifically spiritual pride. Spiritual pride is saying that you don't need God's mercy and grace. You've got that on your own. Those who are poor in spirit confess their unworthiness and know that they need to rely on God. The poor in spirit get to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Unlike them having to pay to be a Roman citizen, no one can buy citizenship into the kingdom of heaven. Well, how is your attitude of spiritual pride? Do you recognize that you are unworthy or are you just thinking, yeah, I can save myself. I can do good deeds or I can buy my way into heaven. Next, Jesus says, God blesses those who mourn for they will be comforted. We've all been there. We've all mourned. There are the obvious reasons we mourn, the loss of a loved one, a friend moving away, the news of bad health. But there's also the mourning of our friends and family who don't know who Jesus is and the wickedness of people. There is a promise here though. We will be comforted. Our comfort may not come this side of heaven, but we do know that there is coming a day when there will be no more death, mourning, crying, or pain. One of my go-to verses for comfort is 2 Corinthians 1, 3-4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. I don't know what you might be mourning in your life today, but I pray that you are encouraged and know that God is right there to comfort you. Jesus isn't saying here for us to have an attitude or a spirit of sadness, but to know that he sees your mourning and he will comfort you through your mourning. Don't walk out of your group with sadness. Walk out of this today knowing that our God is here to comfort you and you can rejoice in that. Next, he says, God blesses those who are humble for they will inherit the whole earth. All of these are from the New Living Translation version of the Bible that we have been reading from in this series. But in the New International Version, in the NIV, it reads meek instead of humble. Having an attitude of humility or meekness is not something that was popular in Jesus's time, nor is it popular in our time today either. Jesus is saying, don't assert yourself over others to further your own agenda in your own strength. In today's world, we see everyone pushing their agenda, whether it is something that is near and dear to their hearts or it's the latest protest, we see a new agenda pushed each day. Instead of acting that way, we can treat others kindly and calmly. There's a difference between entering and inheriting something 
A person can enter someone's house and not inherit it. But in the Old Testament, inheriting didn't just involve entering, but becoming the owner of what they had entered. So Jesus is saying the meek will get to inherit the earth and enter the kingdom, which means they will possess it. This is just mind-blowing, not just for the people that Jesus was talking to, but also for us today. We don't see the ones on the sidelines getting something. We usually see the ones that are vocal and loud and upfront get what they want. This attitude is an easy one to think about, but we have to be careful with it. Our agenda that we should be pushing each and every day is sharing the love of Jesus with others. We need to do it with a humble, meek attitude. Think about it. Are you more likely to listen to someone who speaks to you in a normal, calm voice? Or one who is asserting themselves to show what they are saying is the only way? Then Jesus goes on to say, God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. Or the NIV, they hunger and thirst for righteousness. Have you ever been so physically hungry you would eat whatever someone put in front of you, even if it was your least favorite food? Or have you been so thirsty, either just not from drinking enough throughout the day or from working hard, that you just need something to drink, you're parched? When I was a teenager, we would participate in the 30-hour famine. We wouldn't eat anything or drink anything except water and Gatorade from lunch on Friday until dinner on Saturday. Talk about being hungry, especially as a teenager. I remember eating our dinner meal together on Saturday and then going home and needing to eat something else. Then I was satisfied. Have you ever been that hungry for God? Have you longed for his righteous character to be revealed to you? Jesus isn't talking about justification in, term, justification in terms of righteousness. He is talking about salvation. Have you prayed for revival or for God to reveal himself to you? That is being hungry for him. We become satisfied when we pursue in his righteousness. In the world, they look for satisfaction in all of the wrong places. Their souls will never be satisfied until they have accepted the gift of salvation. Today, I encourage you to continue to pursue after God. If we just stop after we've received his salvation, we won't be fully satisfied. Each day, we need his salvation in the form of his grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Today, run after God's righteousness. After that, Jesus said, says, God will bless those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. This means that you are showing true forgiveness. You aren't just saying it's okay. We just talked about forgiveness in Kid City. We talked about when you truly forgive someone, someone you aren't walking around with the heaviness of hurt, anger, bitterness, and whatnot. Instead, you've released it. Also, you aren't looking to get even. In turn, the merciful are shown mercy. We can't earn God's mercy for salvation. That isn't what Jesus is saying here. What he is saying is that God will deal mercifully with people who have dealt mercifully with others. We need to have an attitude of forgiveness. There are times that I struggle with this one more than others. And today I want to encourage you to let go of all of that hurt, that anger, and that frustration and turn it over to God. Be thankful for the mercy you have been given and give it to others. The sixth thing that Jesus says is God blesses those, who, blesses those whose hearts are pure for they will see God. Jesus is saying here that we should be on a one-track mind in our devotion to God and how we are living. Even though we know that we could never be as holy as God, are we striving for that? Are you, are you doing your best to live a pure life that is holy and pleasing unto the Lord? We have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us to help us to live a pure life. He convicts us when we do wrong, but it's how we respond to the wrong. Do we feel that because of God's grace and mercy, we can live how we want and know that His forgiveness is always there? Or do we live our lives for God, but when we sin, we are convicted, we repent, and we try our best not to live that way? Be thankful for God's sanctification, but don't live a legalistic life. Know that your sins will be forgiven, but you don't have to look, you don't have to look at your life as a list of rules you need to follow. Instead, make it a lifestyle choice where you choose to live your life for God. Jesus tells us that the pure in heart will get to see God. When we see God, we are living with him in heaven. Our hearts will be wholly pure. If our attitude is like that, we can live life how we want to. We aren't striving for holiness, but when we are striving to have that pure and holy life, we will get to see God's glory revealed. Next, Jesus goes on to say, God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. Peacemakers are promoting God's message through peace. They make peace. They don't cause war. And I'm not saying that any of us are going to go out and start World War III, but do you go around looking to cause chaos? Do you go around trying to stir the pot or poke the bear? 
That's not working towards peace. That's working towards disaster. When we work for peace, we are working at bringing others to peace with God and their relationships. As we do this, we need to remain calm and peaceful. We need to make sure that we aren't going around trying to cause chaos. We serve the Prince of Peace, not the Prince of Chaos. We get to be children of God because we have accepted the gift of the Father. As we introduce more people to God, we are welcoming more people into a life of peace because they too will serve the Prince of Peace. Lastly, Jesus said, God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. The NIV says, persecuted because of righteousness. There are so many times in our lives that because we are living a righteous life, we are ridiculed or made fun of. It could be your, um, the unsaved in your workplace. It could be family or friends. But I want to encourage you to stay on the path. In his book, The Whole in Our Holiness, Kevin DeYoung says, the world provides no cheerleaders on the path to godliness. He's right, it doesn't. Of course the world doesn't. They don't get it. They live their lives how they want to and in not doing right. But God has surrounded us with fellow Christians who are like-minded and we are encouraged by them. We get to have a cloud of witnesses that have gone before us cheering us on and are right next to us and the ones that are right next to us. Don't believe me? Look around the room right now. There are all the people there that are cheering you on and you get to cheer them on too. Now, some people believe that the Beatitudes don't end there, but they end in verse 11 where Jesus talks about being persecuted because you are his followers. Like I said before, we get that from our unsaved friends and family members. And there's people in other countries who are persecuted more than we are. But he says, though, in verse 12, what he says though in verse 12 wraps up all of this. Be happy because of it. Be happy that you mourn, that you are persecuted, that you are humble, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today. God, thank you for this time that we have had together, God, in this, um, this that we get to study of the Beatitudes. God, we just ask that you would show us in our lives maybe where our attitudes have not been good. They have been sour, and we need to check ourselves. God, we just um, ask that as we go through that, we will be reminded that there is a room full of people that are here to cheer us on and to help us to strive to live this life. God, we love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. Have a great day, everyone.